Hey everybody and welcome back to Tales of Wanderlust. I'm Cass, this is Jasper, and Napoleon is sleeping inside. Today I am launching a new series called Working on the Road. It's going to be a series of interviews of other nomads. So today I'm going to do the introductory video to that as well as tell you how I make money on the road. So if you're curious about that, stay tuned. on the road series. It is really windy outside. We are here in southern Colorado in mid-October so the weather is quickly changing. There's actually a snowstorm supposedly moving in tomorrow so you've got the wind from the front coming in. Hopefully you don't hear it too much in here in the base camp. One of the biggest questions I'm asked is how to find a job to work on the road and how to make money. It really can vary based on your experience, what you do, what you want to do. In my travels, I have met everybody from bloggers, photographers, to biomedical scientists, lawyers, data analysts, software engineers, project managers. The whole spectrum is out here traveling and it really is quite incredible the careers that you can find to work while you're still living on the road. So in this series, I'll be interviewing both friends and people I run into in my travels and just asking them a simple set of questions as to how they found their jobs, what they do, what their work setups are, and most importantly, does their company actually know that they work on the road? So I'm excited to bring you guys this information, but I'm also excited to learn myself. I've worked for the same company now for nine years. I've been a remote employee for six. So I've just taken my job with me. I don't know how to find remote jobs. I've never had to go through that experience. So it'll be really interesting to hear from others how they found them and what they do. If you ever wanna see any questions added to the interviews, feel free to let me know and we'll try to incorporate those in there. So with today's video, what I'm going to do is introduce you to what I do on the road and how I make a living. So let's jump right into the first question. What do I do for work? I am actually on my third job with my company that I have done while on the road. Currently, I am a strategic initiatives consultant. Basically, I'm a project manager. So I work with a few different teams in order to integrate different technology. It's my job to coordinate those teams, keep all the logistics on track, make sure we're meeting deadlines, answer questions, run meetings, etc. I am in meetings about 50% of the day, and then the rest of the time I'm answering emails or doing data analysis, different things like that. When I first hit the road, I was a small commercial insurance underwriter. That required a ton of equipment. I had an external VPN that had to be hooked up to ethernet cords. I had monitors, a separate hard phone. I had this job when I lived in Airbnbs and I literally would bring in an entire bin of equipment. It was a lot. So thankfully, I only had that job for about eight months while traveling. And then I moved into a process consultant role. In that role, I would look at how our operations departments worked and I would do different projects to try to make them more efficient. About three months ago, I switched into the job that I have now. I am a full-time employee. I have been since I hit the road. So that's extremely nice because it comes with the full benefits, health insurance, etc. So I haven't had to worry about finding those through other means while being on the road. So the second question that I'll ask people is, how did you find your job? I just found them on Indeed. There was a training program for underwriters. So I applied, got the job, went through training, and I I was an underwriter for five years. My company required you to work in the office for three years before going remote. So I did live the cubicle life. I commuted. I did the nine to five hours in an office. And then at my three year mark, I immediately applied for a remote position and I started working from home. While I've been with my company, how I've been finding the different jobs, it's mostly through networking. So if I was in a role and I had interest in another department, I would reach out, I would find mentors, ask them if jobs were coming up. I did apply to the process consultant job a couple of times before I got it. And then it did require some Six Sigma green belt training. We have an internal job posting system. In the job description, it'll tell you if it is at an office location or if it is full-time remote. So I've always been very clear, I want to stick with full-time remote and I have only applied to those jobs. Which brings me to the next question which I am most interested to ask people. Does your company know that you are working from the road? When I was an underwriter and I first hit the road, 
they didn't really know that I was working from the road. I was living in Airbnbs at that point, so I had the regular Ethernet internet connection, I was in a house, I was not on video camera, so there really wasn't a way for them to know that I wasn't in my own apartment. The reason I did that is I had no idea how they would react to me being on the road. I had no idea how the technology would work. I didn't know if the connections were going to re be reliable. So I really didn't want to throw getting their approval into the mix. So I took off from my apartment. I went to an Airbnb. I tried it out. They had no idea. I was in New Mexico when I was working and then I kept traveling. At one point, my boss and I were having a one-on-one -on -one meeting and I just kind of mentioned, I was like, hey, I'm in Idaho right now. And he was very surprised. So at that point, I started being a little bit more open with my direct team that I was traveling, but I did not tell anybody outside of my direct team. And that was really exhausting, trying to hide it, trying to not tell anybody. Plus I had social media. So if people followed me on social media, they might know I was out traveling. It was just a lot. I really wouldn't recommend hiding it if you don't have to. So when I applied for the process consultant job in my interview, I just straight out told the new hiring manager that I lived on the road. I lived in Airbnbs. I had been doing it for eight months. So all of my progress, all of the accomplishments I had done were while I was traveling. And that really helped build their confidence that I could still do a good job while traveling. So when I was a process consultant, all of the teams I worked with knew that I was remote. They would ask me, where are you? Can you show me a picture of where you are? And it was really nice to be open and honest with the team. So when I got this project manager job, I did the exact same thing. In my second interview, I said, hey, just so you know, this is how I live my life, but I just wanna make sure that that is out there and that we're on the same page about it. You coming in, bud? Woo, it's windy. Here. Wowzer. Come on in. Like right now it's too windy, so Jasper's on his way in. Is that really scary? Oh, it's such scary wind, man. Yeah. So what is my actual work setup? So I have a 27 inch Samsung curve monitor. This is a $150 monitor from Walmart. So it's not anything super fancy. I have an external camera up here, which it does have the lights. So that helps when there's weird lighting from the sun, different things like that. I have my work laptop. I have a separate mouse. I do use the keyboard off the laptop. And then I usually have an external speaker as well. I just haven't brought it out yet. Since I boondock most of the time and I do have the monitor, which works off a regular outlet, the base camp has these outlets up front here, but I did need to install an inverter in order to have the monitor to work off the batteries. So if you're curious on AC versus DC, I do have a video on that and I'll link to it up here. So I do have the Victron inverter and I simply turn that on and then these outlets will start working and my monitor will turn on like that. So now I have the full monitor. I have my laptop. This is really where I do most of my work and then I'll have my email or chat down here. It is a pretty good height for typing. My arms are at the regular 90 degree angle. So overall, I think it's okay ergonomically. It might not be the best, but it's not the worst. So this is actually where I do most of my professional work. So if I'm in meetings, if I'm on video, things like that, this is where I am. I'm standing and I have the full screen. I do also work in bed. So I'll show you how I go from this to working in bed. So I would just turn off the inverter, which also saves power. So if it's been a few rainy days and I don't have enough power to run the monitor, I'll actually work in bed most of the time. That way I'm just off the laptop. So then what I do is I take the laptop. I also will take my mouse and those will go in bed. So this stand in here, what makes it a really good height is my lap desk. So it actually has the legs on the back that fold out. I used to try to put my laptop and everything here, but it's too low. So by having the lap desk on top of the cutting board, it's using things I already carry and use and making a workstation. It's a lot easier than having to carry something extra. Underneath that lap desk is my walnut wood cutting board. So this is about an inch thick and the monitor stand does go on that to give it a little bit more height. 
It's also a way for me to hide my cutting board out of the way during the day and have a place for it to be stored. The monitor itself is on just a stand I bought off Amazon. It's an 18 and a half inch monitor stand. Because of the location of the monitor, I wouldn't be able to clip anything back there and I don't want to mount anything to the counter. So this was the best solution, putting it on top of the cutting board. And now it is about an inch from the bottom of the cargo net. And it's a really good height for looking at and I'm not looking down too much and really straining my neck. In order to organize all the cords, I do have this little thing. It just connects to the laptop via USB-C, but it has all sorts of USB, HDMI inputs, power inputs, and I plug everything into here. And then I only have to plug the one USB-C into my laptop in order to run everything. So let's hop over to the bed workspace now. Now in bed, you'll notice that I have the king size pillows and then I have two regular size pillows. I do that for purpose, not necessarily decoration, because when I sit in bed, I take my thick memory foam pillow, put a king size pillow up against it, and then my feather pillow becomes my lumbar support. So by putting that there, ah, it's actually pretty comfortable to sit. And then so I drop everything. There is my lap desk. So when I'm trying to focus on emails or really just sit down and do some work, I find I do that the best while sitting down. This is really my think mode. This is where I get the most work like that done. Since I don't have any outlets here and I do try to save power, when I'm here, I don't have the inverter running and I instead use a 12 volt plug for the laptop and I just plug it in and it runs down to the 12 volt plugs that I installed down by the fuse box. So both workstations have their own charging modes. They have their own pros and cons and benefits. And so far between these two, it's my favorite work setup I've had in here so far. And then when the work day is done, I can just fold this up. That gets stored underneath the bed. The laptop mouse gets stored up here in the cargo net. And then everything's put away and Jasper and I are ready to go out and explore. The monitor on the front counter, it does stay there throughout the week. I don't put it away. And then on the weekend when I'm all done with it, I take it off the mount and I store everything right here in the storage bench. Hi, Goofball. Hi. All right, and that is how I make a living while on the road. I thankfully have had a career the entire time I've been on the road, a steady income. It has made traveling a lot easier. So if you're interested in what other nomads do, check out the Working on the Road playlist. I will post any future interviews in there. Thank you so much for tuning in, everybody, and we will see you next time.